Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTheTrader.com nightly wrap-up show, actually weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, having a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody has a smile on your faces. It's Sunday, time to you know finally put in that last P to work uh, for the new week, but definitely decompress, relax. It's so important again uh, to be mentally health again. The, the mental health side of trading is almost like a taboo subject. Uh, everybody pretends that uh, it doesn't apply to them. And as we all know, especially for all of us who have been trading for a very, very long time, and I'm going on my 21st year now, it's been such a, such a challenging part of a novice trader to getting a little bit of success, to having a tremendous amount of failure, and kind of going back to the drawing board. And all that time in between, uh, the mental health side of you know, the industry is such a kind of a Pandora's box. Don't, don't talk about it. You know, you know, you always have to portray the, I'm strong, the alpha male, the alpha female that it doesn't affect me. But again, so important guys kind of decompress, uh, and make sure again, that you are healthy mentally, uh, going to the new week. Um, before we get started, I kind of po posted a pretty cool, um, case study. Okay. For all you guys, especially, uh, as everybody, if you're joining us for the first time, you kind of know that um, I trade from 60-minute uh, channels. Uh, again, I, I believe firmly, this is obviously part of the whole uh, PS60 process, that there's only six candles of the day, or six and a half candles, actually, if you go uh, through the pre-market. Um, but it's for me, personally, I, I found it so much easier to trade on six candles versus like 182 candles, one-minute candles throughout the day, whatever, you know, whatever that number is. And this is a pretty cool case study. Um, I posted this on our Access to Trader uh, Facebook page. And it was a case study written by Walter Downs. I'm not really familiar with any of the other, other work, but it's a really cool case study uh, that is outlining the psychology of trading by basically comparing um, traders who trade on a small, uh, small interval, like a small interval versus a larger, more vast look at the overall market. So if you guys have a chance, uh, have a chance, go to our uh, Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page. It's the first thing that I, uh, I, um, I tw uh, tweeted, well, posted. Uh, it shows the observations and the conclusions and does a you know, pretty good uh, lengthy view of what traders are facing when you're trading on a small time frame versus a larger one. And again, some of you guys, again, it has nothing to do with pivots, uh, but some of you guys who might be having um, a hard time, kind of a hard time with the smaller uh, intervals. This kind of might we, you know, give you a good uh, different perspective. So kind of uh, look at that. Uh, so let's talk about the markets, right? Let's talk about the markets. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the week that was, and let's talk about the week that I believe will happen. So from the technical point of view, okay, technical point of view here, uh, we talked about for weeks, okay, that this whole channel here, okay, we talked about this whole channel here. As long as we stood above this channel, the bulls have to get the benefit of the doubt, right? We've been talking, if you've been watching this video, even over the last two, three weeks, you kind of know that. And the importance of how much we build, okay, reclaim and build, continue to reclaim and build, that is called bullish action, uh, despite all the vast headlines. And if you look at all the headlines uh, this week, you had a lot of stuff to digest. You had uh, Pelosi with the whole impeach Trump, blah, blah, blah. And again, I don't care if you're for Trump uh, or against Trump. Again, the, the, the reality is, and you can, you can Google this, it would take 20 Republican senators to cast votes to impeach. You know that's not happening. So this is one big uh, circle jerk. This is all it is. This is one big uh, nonsense. So if you're for Trump, against Trump, it doesn't matter. What these headlines are doing is just wasting breath, selling ad space, selling news time. It doesn't matter. There's no way in hell you're going to get 20 Republican senator votes to, to, to vote to impeach. So again, let's forget about that. But again, we're, we're still in this 
a ugly, irrelevant cycle of the pissing game known as China on, China off. In the beginning of the week, you had Trump coming out and said, well, you know, you guys, you guys know that uh, we are you know, closer than you think, making a deal done. And then the next thing you know, Friday comes along and you have this massive pissing contest continues talking about uh, now, now the U.S. is talking about uh, limiting uh, limiting portfolio exposure, potentially, uh, potentially uh, de de not a deleting, delisting China, US, China companies listed on various exchanges. So you have ugly, ugly headlines. This is not going to end well. Uh, as I've been saying, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while, I don't think anything's going to get done with this administration. I just don't think so. It, with, either, even if it lasts another four years, I don't think anything's going to get done. And the most important part is I think all the traders out there, you could be diehard Republican, uh, diehard Democrat, diehard anything, right? We're just sick of the headlines, man. We're just sick of the headlines. As the old saying goes, you know, enough with the labor pains, right? Enough with the labor pains. We just want to see the baby, okay? And again, I don't care if you are a diehard Trump fan. This has to be affecting your trading. How could it not? Okay, Friday, if you look at the cues from Friday, right? This is just, oops, excuse me. If you're looking at the cues from Friday's session, you look at just the afternoon session, you can see how aggressive this was. Um, just look, you know, look at the five minute headlines. You know, you had you had a market. If you if you got long anywhere from 10 o'clock in the morning, it just looked, looks like it was about to confirm and go higher. You had these headlines about potentially China delisting, you know, U.S. delisting these China names. And this market just collapsed. I mean, just it, it, you had literally the cues go from 89 to 87 on one can. This is a five minute view. This is not even a 60 minute view. You had a five minute view, the queue selling off two, two and a half points, and then just getting destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. So if you got long, if you got long anywhere at 10 o'clock, any stock, any anything, especially like Alibaba, right? Like any, like Alibaba, you got massacred, absolutely completely massacred. And the most amazing part of it is if you got long, right? And if you got short five minutes later, you got destroyed. Because the market literally, the queues literally went from 89 to 87, you know, back to almost 89 within three minutes of each other. So again, for Trump, against Trump, I just wish Twitter would turn around and say, look, for the safety of the financial markets, okay, Jack, CEO, Twitter, all that good stuff, let's just take away their Twitter account, okay? Again, for Trump, love Trump, hate Trump, whatever the case may be. Wouldn't it just be better if we just not had a headline every 30 seconds? I think every trader... Uh, can definitely agree to that, okay? And if you're going to put say something out, and you know this is you know this is going to impact the market, okay? If you, before you send out a tweet, and I love the tweet button just like everybody else, but before you send out a tweet, just just think of two seconds for the ramification of the markets. If you want to talk about stability and you know, and stability and level playing field and market structure, you know you might want to not stop tweeting every 30 seconds. Just that's all I'm saying, and I think the markets will thank you for it. Going back to the markets, okay, kind of a render an opinion where we started from, it's not good that we fell back into this channel, okay? Again, technical analysis, I don't care what type of trader you are, you could trade futures, uh, options, uh, equities, commodities, whatever the case may be, like me, trade channels, within pivots, whatever your heart desires, okay? Technical analysis is pure, okay? Forget about, again, we've been saying the algos control this, algos don't control anything, okay? Algos are built by human beings. Okay, they might help you, they might hurt you, but that's a different story. But don't tell me algos control things. The market maker, the 22 year old market maker, he doesn't control anything either. Okay, your process and technical analysis is the only thing that's keeping you from uh, your ultimate place where you want to get uh, into the trading world. And when you talk about for weeks and weeks and weeks, we gave the bulls the benefit of the doubt. The market is fine, the market is okay. As long as we stayed within that range, above that range, you keep on building. They'll be fine. The bulls should be okay. The problem is, okay, we fell below the range and you can see it. And now that five day moving average that a lot of traders uh, keep on asking my opinion, well, Dan, what do you think about the five day? I, I think again, the, that five day moving average that m most people do not give it a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of uh, thought. That five day represents the shortest, the absolute shortest, um, Sentiment, okay, not technical bias, but sentiment. 
And if you notice here, for the last three, four days, it keeps on getting rejected off the five, rejected off the five, rejected off the five, rejected off the five. And the longer we still continue to trade below this channel, there's a very, very good chance that we're going to start rolling over. So again, the bulls going into this week, they need to do a good job. Okay, they need to do a good job. And when you look at uh, what the NASDAQ 100 did, okay, we were down 2.2%. Okay, the NASDAQ deposit was down 2.2%. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. The market is still very, very healthy. But if you look at charts and you look at what stocks have been doing, the, you know, the, the traders' favorites over the last several weeks, you know very, very well, even when the Dow has a good day and the NASDAQ even gets into positive territory, you know these stocks are not doing anything. Again, this is called rendering an opinion, right? Collecting data and rendering an opinion. So it might not affect your trading day for today, but you will have a clearer view going in tomorrow. And if you look at the fan favorites, right? You look at the Amazons, okay? You look at the Facebooks and you look at the, the Apples, uh, right? You look at the apples again, nothing horrible, although Amazon does look like it wants to break down. You look at the NVIDIA's of the world, right? Look at the NVIDIA's again, not horrible, okay? But, you know, again, why aren't they rallying? Okay, and the market has only been under supply for several days. Why haven't they been rallying going into supply? So this is, again, something called uh, in the poker, poker world, like it's almost the market is slow playing us, right? Or at least slow playing the average investor, the average trader that doesn't even know that there's, hey, there's a lot of red flags potentially going into this week. And if you are only concentrating on the macro headlines, the China, the Trump impeachment, all that good stuff, or, you know, headlines, at least the Trump impeachment, you're missing kind of the broader picture. And when you look at what the market has done, especially to the high flyers, you can clearly see, despite the, the, the futures, excuse me, the, despite that the NASDAQ Composite's only been on the supply for three days, you know two weeks ago, a lot of really big aggressive selling has started. Again, you have Roku. Again, this is a monster move. This is not a move just isolated on Roku. This shouldn't be taken lightly because, oh, it's who Roku, who the hell, oh, Roku, nobody cares about Roku. Okay. Right? Again, it's not the Roku decline that's most important. It's it's the, the ripple effect. It's the domino effect that we've seen and are starting to continue to see of other potential names that could get hit. Again, nothing materialistically has changed. The China trade headline has been on and off now for two years. Nothing materialistic has changed. But this is showing you, okay, this is showing that again, if speculation money comes out of the biggest high flying most uh, productive names throughout the year that made their moves, well, how safe is your stuff, right? How safe is your name? So when you look at Roku that goes literally from 176 to 100, it's a pretty big move. When you look at Netflix, and again, you could talk about the whole, you know, you could talk about the whole streaming thing, Disney's in their name and Amazon and, you know, NBC and Comcast and Apple. And okay, fact of the matter is Netflix has gone now from, from 380, okay, from 380, all the way down to 352. Again, who cares? It's only Netflix. Again, keep this in mind. It's a ripple effect, like we said before, and this will continue. The longer we stay below that technical level, back into the channel, below the five-day moving average, and are building lower, lower highs, right? It's going to affect everything. Again, look at shop. Again, some of you guys might not have even heard of shop, but again, you're seeing money, speculation money, and this is what traders need. If you're, if you're going long, you need somebody to go and pay a higher price for you. So if that stops and the markets start to completely omit the speculation money, you are going to see a move, right, from 400 to all the way back down to 300. You're going to continue to see these moves. Now, how is this going to affect the other names, right? Here's Amazon, right? Everybody loves Amazon. Everybody uses Amazon. And everybody's coming out and say, well, again, the stocks will be 2,500 one day. It'll be 3,000 one day. Sure. Right. It won't be tomorrow. OK, it won't be tomorrow. And again, if you've been seeing what, what's going on in Amazon since the start of August, it's exactly the same thing you're seeing in Netflix and Roku and Shopify. Maybe not to that degree. But again, you know, again, look at the scoreboard. Amazon has gone from 2000 and now it's at 1700. Not a big deal. Right. Until it becomes a big deal. And again, just like the Nasdaq 100, you can see it. Every single time it hits the five-day moving average, the shortest term sentiment, what happens? Rejected, 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 rejected. Again, if you're trading eyes wide shut, okay, in the rose-colored glasses, 
it's not a big deal. As we've seen now from technical analysis, from the measured potential pivots, it is a big deal. And again, if you're an apologist, and again, this is not just going into Amazon. This is just going into any high-flying stock who's starting to get really, really beat down or potentially beat down. You are deceiving yourself to think there can't be more selling pressure. And again, can Amazon be at 2500 one day? Absolutely. I love it. You love it. But it's not going to be tomorrow. And again, if you start looking at stocks over and over and over again, it's starting to ripple down, right? NVIDIA had Micron earnings come out. Not the best, not the worst. China, right? China, semiconductor, chips, China, right? Again, it's not a big deal yet until it might be a big deal. Apple might not be a big deal yet, right? But the longer it stays below this channel and starts confirming this bottom channel yet, Again, it could be a problem. So if you go into this week and you look at your favorite stocks, and again, it doesn't make a difference if, if you're trading them, if I'm trading them, these are the, the highest speculation money bets in the market. Again, when everybody's talking about option order flow, you're not looking at TJ Maxx, correct? You're looking at Alibaba and Apple and Tesla and, B, and, and BYND and Amazon and Google and Netflix and all these highest flying names. Again, it might not be that bad, right, yet. But again, the theme is, if money continues to spur, take, taken out of the you know, high-flying speculation names and continue the theme and the cues continue to build below the five-day moving average and start confirming the 50-50-50, 100-100-100, 20 you're going to run into a problem. So going into this week, again, you might not trade these names and it, it might not affect you and you're waiting for the hot stock of the day on Monday, okay, which again, God be with you. Um, you are missing the point of organic order flow. Organic order flow does affect you. It might not affect your stocks that you trade, but it's going to affect you. And always remember this, especially for the new trader. These stocks are darlings of Wall Street, okay? You might not trade them, but they're darlings of Wall Street. And if there is a buyer strike, okay, if there's a buyer strike and an aggressive attempt to pull these things lower, I promise you, if people are not bidding up Amazon or not bidding up Facebook or not bidding up uh, Apple, eventually your time in your um, revolving door, whatever the hell you're trading, okay, uh, is going to stop as well, the musical chair game as well. So just kind of be conscious where we are macro-wise. Again, take your opinion, form your opinion, form a conclusion, and act on reality in front of you and not the reality uh, that you want. Um, I, I think it was a pretty aggressive trading week. I, I think we could all agree with that. Um, I, I had one crappy trading day. I think it was on Thursday. It was on Thursday. And I broke a very, very important, two very, very broke, uh, important rules. I, I did very, very well on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I did well on Friday. But Thursday was just like one of those days that, I, again, I say this all the time, we're, we're human beings, okay? We, we want to be the greatest parents in the world. We want to be uh, the greatest friends in the world. We want to be the greatest spouses in the world. But we're human. We're flawed. And as a trader, and I've been doing this now going on my 21st year, as a trader, you're going to find yourself in a position that you know you're about to do something wrong and you do it. So I don't dwell on the days that I you know, do pretty well. I dwell on those days that I continuously, and again, through all my years and years and countless hours of being in front of the screen, you're still there and you're going to still shoot yourself in the foot. And those days we want to dwell on because we want to make sure that we don't keep on repeating those days. And again... They will come once in a while, but the point is we're human beings. They're going to happen. Um, and the most important part is, and I know those days suck, but those days you really have to kind of sit back and kind of remind yourself how fragile we are, both mentally uh, and, and balanced, right? Materialistically balanced that it will affect us and we will continue to bleed if we continue to be uh, our worst enemies. And you always want to like take a sticky pad and just a sticky note and just put it in front of you and say, hey, Stop the nonsense, man. You got to stop shooting yourself in the foot. And unfortunately, for Thursday's session, uh, I did that only uh, to do okay uh, on Friday again. But overall, a pretty solid week. Uh, good pivots. Uh, I, I would say we traded primarily, although there's some pretty good uh, upside bias, primarily instead of downside, again, based on the reflection uh, that I saw uh, in the NASDAQ 100, especially. Uh, with all these headlines, again, especially the China headlines affecting uh, a ripple effect, anything, any, anything made in China, the semiconductor names uh, especially will get affected. But overall, a uh, pretty solid week. Uh, going into this week, I am, you know, I, I have to be sell biased, although I will 
there are some names that I do like uh, to the upside. And I, I will give you guys a couple of uh, ideas going into um, into tomorrow's session. But uh, you know, I am sell bias. I definitely am sell bias. And again, can that you know can that completely uh, can that completely change you know an hour into Monday's trading day? Absolutely. Again, I'm not I'm not here to be right. I'm here to uh, try to be as safe as fiscally possible. Uh, with my capital as possible. So if you look at Friday's day, uh, very, very, uh, very aggressive. Okay, very, very aggressive. Uh, let's talk about Friday's session. Um, let's go all the way down to here. Uh, yeah, so Peloton, right? Uh, I have the product. A lot of people have the product. Unfortunately for me, uh, I've used it now five times in about a year and a half, but I love it. Okay, the five times that I used it, I definitely love it. And now, uh, again, it is affectionately known as another uh, closet. For me to hang my stuff on, I'm joking around. My wife actually does love the product, but again, uh, a pivot is a pivot of a pivot. We, we again, we don't care which side the pivot confirms. Okay, and amazing, uh, the, the locate fee for uh, Peloton for Friday was only seven cents, which is actually great. Um, and if you had to locate on it, on it at all, but it was seven cents, pretty pretty good, pretty reasonable price. Uh, Peloton again. Uh, here is the pivot to the upside, 216.15, uh, 2615 bit to the upside, uh, 25.50 to the downside. Again, second entries on both. And for all you guys who uh, are part of either the live uh, webinar, especially you guys know what the second entry is, but all you guys who are trading uh, on our Twitter feed, okay, who are not part of the live webinar, you have to, again, just keep on re-watching the workshop over and over again. It's eight hours of, you know, eight hours breaking down the theory and then we'll talk about in, in nausea uh, second entries. And again, it's just a safer way to entering the position. It's like holding two aces and you're getting uh, Delta third one. So Peloton, we talked about uh, pre-market 26.15 to the upside, 25.50 to the downside. And again, pretty, pretty aggressive move. Um, pretty aggressive move here. Here's the 60 minute view, right? Here's the 60 minute view. Uh, again, here's the bottom of the channel here, right? 25.50. And it just, just absolutely collapsed. Absolutely collapsed. Uh, big, big move. Congratulations uh, for all you guys who caught that. Um, I was watching, I was watching Tesla in the morning. I was looking for a sneaky pivot, right? Uh, and this was, this, this was the, this was definitely the, the move of the day. Um, I mean, at least for me it was, um, so here was Tesla. Okay. And the, I, I put on the Twitter feed, uh, two forty four thirty. Okay. Uh, we, this is the big number that needed to confirm and it did. And it did. And you can see that two forty four thirty was the top of the range here. It confirmed the 248. We actually, in the live webinar, we got long right here on the sneaky channel. And again, when you're on the Twitter feed, I want to make sure I give you guys the cleanest look, okay? That, that there, again, if it stalls out, you know, you can use break even as you stop. So we got long through all this the sneaky area here, this uh, 243 area. Um, the only reason why, look at me, you know, points of interest you had here. It stopped here. Uh, 24340, 24350, uh, 24350. So you can see here, 24350 was going to be the sneaky channel. Uh, once it started building, uh, we got long, confirmed that 24430 and just absolutely exploded. Really, really good move. I was very, very happy uh, about that. Uh, BYND never got there. And the, here's, here's the ironic part about BYND. You know, BYND, if you've been following us for, for a while, um, you know, you kind of see pivot after pivot. We were trading this thing. Um, sell bias now for a very long time. And the most ironic part was uh, I had this really, really big move this week, uh, you know, big 20, 25 point move this week. And ironically on, on Wednesday, I said, the only thing that's going to save this thing is the act of God, literally the act of God. This thing looked like it was going to just absolutely collapse. And it comes out with a PR with McDonald's. Okay. And beyond has been the king of the PRs. The most amazing part of this of this headline on BYND was McDonald's is testing its burger, okay? Not in a major metropolitan city like Los Angeles or New York, you know, New York, hell, even Brooklyn, right? There's like 8 million people in Brooklyn. And again, nothing offend, you know, no offense, love to everybody around the world. But again, it's a little bit different testing a Beyond Burger in Manhattan, right? In New York City than the southwest province of Ontario, Canada. Again, no offense, but again, it's a little bit different. But again, there's so many shorts that are trapped in this thing. Uh, excuse me, so many longs that are trapped in these things. That's so much short interest that any movement to the upside will give this thing a pop. And it actually had a really, really good pop. 
And the most important part, if you look at Friday's trading session, was it didn't go down. Okay, it, it could have they, they gave it every opportunity to kind of go down. And again, here I was looking at this 5630 area right here for the next leg up that never got there. But again, if you're a bull, you know, it never went down either. So going into this week, you kind of have you know, you kind of have a pretty defined channel here. You have a channel here to the upside. Again, you don't need the up, up, upper channel here. You kind of have an upper channel, middle channel here to the upside, and you have this really definitive view to the downside here. So this looks like a pretty good trade setup for this week. It might take a couple of days, but again, I wouldn't be shocked if it broke back up, and I wouldn't be shocked if it confirmed this bottom channel here uh, to go back as well. But again, something we definitely have to watch uh, for this week. Uh, Square, not a big move. Uh, 6120 needs to build. Um, you know, here's a square chart. Here's a square play. 6120. It went to like 6165 again before that news broke uh, with uh, with uh, with Trump and headlines and all that stuff that got back down. Yeah, 40 45 cent move. Not exactly the biggest thing in the world. Uh, Workday never confirmed. Uh, uh, Nvidia, you know. Nvidia gave a move very, very thin though. Uh, very, I didn't trade this thing. It was very, very thin. Uh, 177.35 got rejected three, three times on um, on the 60 minute channel. And sometimes the, the thing what I what I always look at uh, what I always look at is the ability um, is the ability to kind of say no to a trade. And sometimes you look at a stock and you say to yourself, "Wow, this looks pretty, pretty good." Uh, I'm ready to trade this thing, but if you see all this, these levels here, right? Kept on rejecting this whole area here, and when the video broke, and it, and it went up like 40, 50 cents, whatever it was. But if you guys remember, we we didn't take it in the live webinar because it was all hundred share lots. Okay, there was just absolutely no conviction. Hundred share lots, twenty cents spread, and again, when you're when you're trading anything, you want to make sure there's a lot of liquidity, a lot of order flow, because again, the last thing you want to do is put on a trade with hundred share lots, uh, because again, it's showing you there's no. There's no institutional pressure. It's all retail buying and selling names. So sometimes you have to kind of say no. And so it's like it's like the old uh, Nancy Reagan campaign in the '80s, just say no, like she was referring to drugs. But sometimes you got to say no uh, to a pivot. Went up forty cents. It doesn't make a difference. Obviously, got destroyed by the headline as well. Uh, Boeing never got up there. Three ninety one. This is a big area, man. Uh, Netflix never got down here. Okay, actually got down here. This is a huge area. This 260 will be a big spot on Netflix going into this week. You can see how many times it held, right? 260, 20, 260, 30, 260, 40. This 260 breaks, man. That that level is that 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 level will break and the floodgates will open up. So this is a big, big area we want to watch uh, for this week. Uh, Amazon again, like like I said, you know. <laughs> It, it doesn't make a difference, guys. You, you love Amazon. I love Amazon. But the most important part is technical analysis comes before anything else. And again, I said 47 to the upside, uh, 34 to the downside. Um, here's Amazon. It okay, broke, down, uh, broke down below this 34, went all the way down to 1713. Uh, BYND, uh, you know, quick move here. It never really gave a second entry. Broke 53, went to 50. 380 before it came back in. Uh, nothing really there as well. Uh, never t Tesla never got back up there. Uh, never you know never got back down there. Yeah, Roku. Roku. This is me. Look, Roku's gotten killed. Okay, but Roku probably has one more leg down. It really does. So if you look at this whole channel here, 98 is gonna be a big number uh, for for this week. If it starts confirming down 98, you know, look, you could get a move to 96, and if it gets really really aggressive, uh, this measure potential channel at 90 could be uh, there in play as well in case things uh, get very very aggressive. So let me give you guys some ideas going into uh, this week. Uh, let me give you some non-beta ideas as well. Uh, RCUS, uh, I don't know what the hell this is, okay? But it looks pretty good, right? First close uh, out of a daily channel. If it starts confirming above like this 1040, 1050 area, you could get a nice leg up here. Uh, pizza, right? Papa John's, baby, Papa John's. Uh, first close uh, above the 10-day moving average. Again, I believe personally the 10-day moving average is uh, the birth of the trade, okay, on the upside. Again. Am I have any interest in this thing? Absolutely not. I trade all beta. I just trade beta, the same nine, 10 names over and over again, 95% um, of the time. I'll sprinkle in some other things. Uh, but more important is, uh, again, nobody needs to hold your hand. That's the whole point of a pivot in technical analysis. It's either going to go or it's not going to go. So I like that as well. Uh, ZM, again, they, they're killing these IPOs. Um, you know, I think next leg down, if it starts confirming the 75 area, uh, this bowling will go down to 73s. Looks pretty good as well. 
Uh, IMMD was a big, big runner, really, really big runner. Again, you could see the only thing that saved this was this IPO, uh, was this uh, rising Bollinger Band. This thing starts confirming back below 21, 20, 21. I think this thing will get uh, really, really ugly. And let me just give you guys one more. Let me give you guys one more non-beta name. Um, you know, over overstock again. The whole, you know, the whole. The whole headlines of the potential pump and dump by the CEO, everything is great, everything is great, and let me sell two million shares, a million shares, three million dollars for long. Anyway, has looks like the next leg down is coming down, starts building below this eleven, uh, could get down to eight. You know, could get down to eight. So if you do have a locate on this thing, keep an eye on that uh, as well. So that's it, folks. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. Uh, God bless everybody. If anybody is coming aboard uh, tomorrow, either the live webinar or uh, the Twitter feed. We start up about nine o'clock Eastern time. Please get into the live webinar at 9 a.m. Because again, this is where we break down all the morning pivots and get everybody set up for the day. Guys, God bless you. Dream big, as I tweeted before, dream big. Don't worry, God has your back. One love, guys. Love everybody and hope to see you all in the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.